you just left the White House. President Biden stopped by for this visit. It wasn't on his schedule. What did you two discuss? Well, we have been discussing quite a lot lately and uh, continuing that uh, deals with the Finnish uh, NATO membership, surely, and uh, the geopolitical situation worldwide. What is your advice to President Biden, given that you used to speak to President Putin quite a lot prior to his invasion of Ukraine? Uh, I do not believe that uh, President Biden needs my advices, but uh, maybe we have changed uh, experiences. And uh, speci- specifically, approximately a year ago, before Russia attacked, uh, I think that President uh, wanted uh, also me to find all the possibilities of uh, maintaining peace. That was not possible. Mm. Yeah, you are known, or dubbed the Putin whisperer. But the, the last time you spoke to Putin was in May, and you said to him, we are joining NATO. Yeah. Will you ever speak to him again? I have said that I'm uh, totally prepared to speak with him if uh, there's some benefit from that. But uh, at the moment, we haven't found out anything such. As you are waiting to be basically checkmarked into NATO, all the documents are in a row. What are you doing behind the scenes to prepare for your border, 135-mile border at Russia, to be a part of the eastern flank? Uh, You have to keep in mind that, uh, unlike many other countries, uh, we in Finland, uh, uh, after Cold War ended, still kept on being aware that something might someday happen. That means that, uh, for example, we maintain conscription, which means that we have 300,000 trained uh, reserves, which is more than uh, a lot bigger countries in Europe. We have, well, purchased uh, F-35s, quite a amount before the attack. So <clears throat> we have always been pre- prepared to protect our borders. And uh, joining NATO uh, surely gives, uh, in my thinking, more uh, coverage uh, that nothing will happen. Mm. Uh, But uh, if something happens, we are prepared to take our share and uh, keeping the borderline. So this is an advancement of your defense of this in-case scenario. In December of 2021, Putin demanded that NATO ratchet back this territory on the eastern flank um, that was basically built up over a quarter century. Then he demanded that there would be no expansion as well. You came out and you said he's trying to create this sphere of influence around Russia. That was a game changer in our eyes, because so far we had always thought and said that from our own will we remain military Uh, underlined. But um, who believes it after Putin says that, well, you can't join. So that was a real game changer in Finnish thinking. But do you think he considers uh, Sweden and Finland part of his sphere of influence? Uh, When he said that he demands that NATO doesn't Enlarging anymore. Practically, it means that he wanted a NATO free zone in front of Russia. I also want to ask you because you just came off this meeting with President Biden. There obviously is an election in the United States next year. Former President Trump is in that election. He wants to be back at the White House, and he in the past has criticized NATO. Are you concerned about a change of power dynamics here in Washington, especially before? This is signed on the dotted line, done deal of your ascension into the military alignment? Well, I I think uh, our our application will be fully ratified uh, before, long before your new elections. We have to keep in mind that uh, uh, as President uh, Trump uh, often said uh, things about NATO, pointing out especially, like many of his predecessors, that uh, Europe has to uh, take its part, that is, that 2%. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so this is uh, uh, what we have experienced so far from him. You're also going to be speaking to politicians. How concerned are you about the U.S. potentially wanting to claw back or hamper down some of that aid they're sending to Ukraine? What has now happened uh, uh, in Ukraine and uh, in our minds, in Western minds, is that we are more united over Atlantic than ever before, I would say. And I, I see no ways to, to somehow... Uh, end up to some kind of different. Did you see the recent reporting that potentially it was Ukrainian group that was responsible for the Nord Stream sabotage? Do you think an act like that will make it more difficult for some Western nations to provide aid to Kyiv? I, I, <clears throat> I don't know, and I do not believe that anybody knows the real truth. Let's wait... Uh, because it was in investigations like allies, Swe economic Sweden, exclusion Swedes zones. are doing all the time in investigations. So let's see where they end up. I also want to ask you, in the face of this conflict, China has not come out and condemned it. And we actually see Xi Jinping will be making a visit to Moscow. What are the concerns that you're seeing in terms of China crossing this line and providing lethal weapons or aid to Moscow? Uh, first of all, China wants uh, to have connection to Europe. It's an important market for them. And um, I would say that uh, it would be wise for China to understand that uh, ordinary people in Europe, in free world, have an opinion. And if China uh, is seen as a supporter of Russia, that would have a huge impact on people's mind and in free world what people think it reflects also to policies mm. so uh, Chinese image in a way is also at stake here was China brought up in your conversations in Washington mm, uh, like I said uh, we discussed about uh, global situation and China mm -hmm. is obviously a, a main factor of that mm -hmm. China is uh, in that discussion, surely. You're also here with Finnish businesses. Uh, you're buying yes. some more jets from Lockheed Martin. Do you feel like this uh, NATO alliance and your ascension into NATO has opened up more economic cooperation between Finland and the United States? That we can say, and uh, the idea with my business <clears throat> delegation is not focused on that, uh, you have to keep in mind that Finns, in spite of our quite uh, small uh, size, uh, we are quite advanced in some sectors of new technologies. And I think... Nokia 5G? Nokia 5G, 6G, artificial intelligence and uh, quotum technology, which is uh, very important. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, know-how on those. And uh, I think that uh, so far, uh, all the discussions uh, with, within business, uh, businesses, both American and Finns, uh, have been very fruitful. The U.S. has been able to get the Netherlands and also Japanese companies to not export or deal with China when it comes to this advanced technology. Is that something that Finland's looking at? Uh, actually, we do not have that kind of uh, uh, trading with China, not at least very much. That's not the main point here. The main point is that uh, uh, building up uh, security, security on hard issues, but also we have to keep in mind uh, the global threat of climate change, mm -hmm. and that needs technology. I just want to end with, uh, you share this border more than 800 miles with Vladimir Putin. Yep. What keeps you up at night? <laughs> Nothing keeps me up at night. So but you sleep the, well. But the daytime, we, like I have <laughs> said, uh, uh, we are not afraid, but we are fully awake. 